Hi my lovely Frosty fam, it's me Karen Frost here at Nail Decadence and I've got another gel video for you. So in this video I shall be using the Silk Hair Gel System. It's my favourite gel system. Um, it's a Polish brand and yeah it, it comes from Poland when you order it, it comes from Poland. I know a few, there's a few places that sell it over here in the UK but I just order it straight from the um, the source and yeah it gets posted from Poland and that's that it's just a really nice system to work with and yeah I really enjoy using it so in this video we're also using gel polishes I'm going to be encapsulating the gel polishes in the gel you can do that it's perfectly fine so I've got a few different brands going on I've got some Madame Glam bits that I'll, I'll be using these are the rubber base uh, from Madame Glam they're just they're, they're really thick because they're meant to be thick um, just over nat th natural nails just like a, a small overlay kind of thing just to add strength to natural nails um, I've also got some gel polishes from SBD London and Premier Gel just you know a bit of this and a bit of that is that there's a lot going on in these nails I will say that but it still doesn't come across as really um, overly done, if that makes sense. There's a lot going on, but I, just, I don't think it's too out there. I still think it's really nice. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm... I like busy nails. I don't know. I don't think they're that busy, but yeah, there's a, a lot going on in them. Oh, I've also got this stuff. I don't know what it's called, but it's great. <laughs> It's some kind of netting with foil on it. I don't know. It's a pain in the butt to work with, but it looks really nice in the nail. <laughs> so on to the nails. So I'm, I've put on some seriously long tips. These are the, the you know extra long, extra extra long. I don't know. They're very long tips. I've applied them. I've blended them in. I've removed the shine from them because when you're working with gel you want to definitely remove the shine to make sure that the gel adheres properly to the nail tip so first thing after you've done that is to apply your your base coat so that's what I'm doing I'm just applying my base coat layer to the uh, natural nail not really going very far on the tip it's not necessary to go down the tip with the base coat so I've only just sort of gone down a little bit with the base coat on the tip uh, cure that for 60 seconds and then I'm going to start my reverse French so I'm taking that pink um, gel builder gel and I'm going to bring it down the nail as far as I want that extended nail bed to go and I'm going to clean up the sides so I'm sort of putting the gel in the general shape that I'm going for and then I want to flash cure it in place so I, you know it doesn't move and I can carry on this is a medium viscosity this gel so it it, it will move if you take too long it does uh, it will yeah it will run so I've got to turn it upside down because it started to run turn it upside down get gravity to help me there and then flash cure it quickly in place <laughs> as with all of my gel videos there are going to be a ton of flash curing I'm sorry but that is just the reality of working with gel it moves so you have to flash cure it if you don't want it to slide off the nail and everywhere else so yes plenty of flash curing in place turning the hand upside down really does help it helps gravity just pulls that gel to the center of the nail and it helps you build your apex as well it's just it works because it pulls it away from the side walls and into the center of the nail where you want the thickest part of the nail to be i've done a bit of a mess with this uh french reverse french there creating that extended nail bed yeah made a bit of a mess of that one that's going to require some fixing as you can see even when I flash cured it it still had um, 
slipped and moved down a bit so that's going to take a bit of filing to sort out but never mind gel files easily <laughs> my application of gel is never really neat to be honest i always make a bit of a, a mess of it um yeah i just let the gel do what it wants to do and sort, sort it out in filing <laughs> you shouldn't really do that but that's just the way i work the, well that's the way i work with gel i'm neater with my application of uh, acrylic now I work with the gel the same way I work with acrylic in that I encapsulate everything and build my strength with clear. So rather than build my uh, apex and strength with the cover pink, I'm going to cap it in clear. I like the glass finish of clear over the top of a colour, but also if I cap it in clear, then my colours will last that little bit longer because I'm using less of them. It's a win-win in my opinion. However, you are not beholden to do the same. You can build the uh, reverse French in the cover pink if you so wish. The choice is most definitely yours. So I've flash cured both of those uh, nail beds extended nail beds and now I've moved on to the two middle fingers and I'm using that um, iridescent uh, rubber base from uh, Madame Glam just a thin layer of that to sort of start off my background and now I'm adding some white gel in sort of a higgledy piggledy sort of diagonal lines across the nail flash cure those in place there we go same on the other finger similar design just really I'm not trying to um, what's the word I'm not trying to be neat I want it to be a bit messy I want it to have higher parts and lower parts because that all adds to the depth and, and dimension so yeah adding that that was the uh, builder gel the white now I'm adding some of the Madame Glam Vietnam which is a sort of beige toned rubber base so I'm just gonna put that on random spots in on the nails the two middle fingers I'm doing them the same but not exactly the same you know you know what I mean similar but not exact so yeah I'm just building up layers and when you do it this way well, when you look at the nail in person it has so much depth and dimension to it because you're just layering so yeah there's a million flash cures I'm sorry about that but yeah million flash cures because there's a lot going on in these nails and I have to flash cure each bit so that I can move on to the next step without the colors being mixed because if I hadn't flash cured it this would mix in with the beige and it wouldn't you know so that's why I flash cure there we go one more flash cure well there's a lot more than one <laughs> I wanted to add another layer of this pink champagne because it wasn't showing up as much as I would like so because that obviously I'm working in a thin layer of the gel polish because you don't want gel polish to wrinkle so you want to work in thin layers so just going over those spots where I put the um, this rose gold pink champagne looking uh, gel polish yeah just going over those areas one more time to just build up the color pay off and again of course with the flash curing now I'm going to back to that Madame Glam Rub Base Amazon, adding some more of that on. And I will just continue layering the gel polishes here and there and everywhere. And then I, once I'm happy with it all, I will encapsulate it with my clear gel. And then I will move back to the French and file in the smile lines. So whilst I'm busy, oh these opal crush oh they are so gorgeous look at this stuff look at it look at it oh, isn't that amazing the flex of iridescent lusciousness in this gel polish is just stunning so yeah had to add some of that in um oh yeah totally totally 
got distracted by that uh, gel polish there. And yeah, shiny, shiny. I'm like a magpie. <laughs> See something shiny and you get totally distracted. Anyway, as I was saying, whilst I'm layering up all those gel polishes, let's have a chat. How are you doing? Are you okay? There's a lot going on in the world. It, the last couple of years have been um, insane, to say the least. I obviously have a lot going on in my personal life that you guys uh, know about um, I'm I'm getting through I'm coping a little better than I was however um, I'm not sleeping well the funeral was on the 29th and it's the 28th today so yeah that has me um a bit messed up to be honest but when i'm feeling a bit more positive and not bursting into tears that's when obviously i'll sit down and, and do some editing in those um karma moments so right now i'm i'm feeling calm but yeah i do have my times where i'm i'm not quite so calm but i am coping better than up than i was initially so yeah um for those who don't know my sister passed away and that's whose funeral it is going to be so yeah it's been a hard time um i'm still um waiting to see about my organ damage that i have um we'll see how that goes i'll i'll let you guys know as as time goes on um what happens with that yeah but for now i'm just taking each day as it comes and just trying to get through it to be honest and that's all i can do um the stress has also manifested in um my muscles and my joints i suffer with a lot of pain and i'm definitely um my muscles are definitely much more tense because I'm, I am distressed and it will manifest in your body. So, yeah, I'm on a quite high dose of morphine to try and ease some of that, that pain that I have. Um, additionally, on top of my, my usual pain, as it were. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. But I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm getting through. My husband is the most amazing man ever and I'm so lucky to have him he's a great support and my children uh, they look very loving so and yeah but the rest of the family my, my mum uh, bless her little cotton socks she's such a sweetheart so yeah I, I I've got support from my family and I'm um, you know um, I'm getting through but enough about me how are you please do you know let me know in the comments I'm gen genuinely, genuinely, genuine. oh gosh, can't speak. <laughs> I'm genuinely interested in how you are doing. So do please leave a comment, say hi. I love getting to know you guys. There's a few of you that, that are coming often and it's really lovely to get to know you. You know, just little bits and bobs, know who's watching and you know, I think it's lovely to get to know a little bit about um, my subscribers, my, my lovely Frosty fam, you know, we are a fam here, so yeah, I want to know how you're doing and, and what's going on in your life and, and stuff like that, so it's wonderful, it's great, it's more personal that way, I don't want to be just this abstract person whose hands you see and, and, and that and voice you hear but has no um, contact with you, no, I want to, I want to, I want to get to know you guys a little bit more, you know, it's nice so anyway I've removed let's get back to the nails I've removed the <laughs> tacky layer and I'm going to uh, sort out the reverse French that I made a mess of so I'm using my e-file and this under the nail cleaner or cuticle cleaner bit whatever you want to call it um, I'm just using that to remove the worst of the um, gel polish flow over and then 
I will use my hand file to just sharpen up that French get that nice and neat so yeah just go around with the hand file this is I think it's a 180 hand file it doesn't need to be um, overly what's the word overly coarse for this also when you are using the hand file and the e-file do not press down onto the actual nail push against the wall of the of the French yeah not down on the nail just against the wall you know what I mean when you try it do not push down just push sideways against the wall because if you push down obviously you're going to dig into the nail and you don't want to do that also you want to make sure that you're supporting that nail and when, when you're filing it as well these are very long very very long so remove the dust with a lint free wipe and some rubbing alcohol so I don't want that in the gel give it a good wipe down happy with that yeah just have a one last look before I start the next step in case I needed to um, file it any further but no I was happy with it so on to the next step Adding that pink champagne gel polish, just a layer of that on first of all. I'm going right up the wall with this because it will give it a nice outline. If you don't go up the wall, you won't have that outline. So it's, the choice is yours. Do you want that sort of outline around the um, reverse French or not? If you don't want that outline around the reverse French, then just keep the polish to the nail tip do not go up the walls with it but I wanted that sort of outline effect that's why I'm making sure to put the polish right up the walls and this is obviously the second layer because I wanted it to show up a bit more than it did with one layer and obviously two thin layers are better than one thick layer always always with gel polish do not try and add thick layers to get your color payoff just do it in thin layers that way you know it's going to cure properly and it's not going to wrinkle so I've gone in with a third layer to really really get that color pay off because this is a translucent um, polish if you put it over at the top of a pink it's really nice like a baby pink it's really nice over the top or even over white it looks really nice but because the tips are clear um, I did have to and because it's so translucent add in three layers to get that you know real color payoff that I wanted so I'm going to use this netting foil thing in Bob so I'm just using my scissors to sort of roughly cut out the uh, shape and length of the reverse French so that it will fit nicely up the wings this is strange stuff it's um it's not the easiest of things to work with I'll say that you well you're gonna see me struggle <laughs> with it <laughs> it's really fiddly to work with this stuff really is and because it's so um it's so gappy when you cut it it kind of look it kind of falls apart but oh, it's not the end of the world just sort it out so my um brain decided that i was going to try and stick it into the foil gel so i applied some foil gel because when you um use foil gel it's sticky yeah so i thought oh let's try that Rather than trying to glue it down, let's use the foil gel and see if that holds it down. That was what my uh, my little brain decided to think of. And for it, uh, if this wasn't quite so stiff, it would have worked. But as you can see, as I'm trying to push it into the um, foil gel, it's coming back up. And it's because the... The netting part of it is really stiff so it just doesn't want to behave so the foil gel idea didn't really work the way I wanted it to so I'm going to add some builder gel use a plastic baggie to pin down the netting and then cure it as I'm holding it pinned down that's 
you could use glue if you wanted to to do it yeah, yeah you could use glue I decided to do it with gel for whatever reason I don't know I just thought I'm gonna stick it down with gel and that's what I did so yeah if you don't want to faff quite as much as I did then um, you just use glue <laughs> Just use glue. Why do I always make my life harder for myself? I do these things and I watch it back and I'm like, well, what are you do? What were you thinking? Karen, really? What were you what were you thinking, love? I don't know. I can't tell you. <laughs> it's just how I do. <laughs> right, so finally got it to stay down, st stick st stay stuck down and uh yeah you've got to encapsulate that into clear builder gel <laughs> obviously i'm not um putting the gel over the nail bed because i already encapsulated that so yeah i already built the apex in that part so i'm only putting the clear gel on the free edge of the tip and obviously right up the wings because I want to encapsulate that netting. Also turning over the hand upside down to help gravity do its job and yeah. For some reason the back of this uh, by the cuticle area looked a bit low so I just added just a tiny amount of gel in that uh, cuticle area to just make sure it was built up enough. In comparison to the other nails it looked a little bit flat so yeah just added a little bit in in that cuticle area to build it up a bit more this is why i say always look at all the nails together not just the nail that you're working on because if you're comparing them constantly you'll be able to rectify any inconsistencies in the shape or the thickness or whatever of, of, of the nail so yeah stop and look at all of the nails often compare contrast and that's how you'll get a nice uniform set that is you know cohesive and similar so same again on the little finger gonna fight <laughs> gonna fight with this foil netting stuff and yes, yes, I did exactly the same thing again. <laughs> I really wanted the foil gel to work. <laughs> I don't know why I was insisting on it after it didn't work the first time, but I was determined <laughs> to try it again. I was like, now maybe, maybe it was just a, a you know, a, a dodgy part of the of the netting it was just difficult to work with maybe the other uh, you know the next piece will will behave better yeah well you know what's going to happen don't you of course you do why i thought it was going to be any different i do not know but as you can see it's sticking down a little bit but not as much as it needs to <laughs> i think if it was lace I think I would have had more chance but because this this netting stuff like I said before it's so stiff and it sticks up it's really it's a weird type of um, fabric or material how what do you even class it as I don't know it's weird stuff to work with but it looked really pretty in the nail I will say that pain in the butt but it was worth it but but <laughs> Just um, excuse me <laughs> for being really juvenile. <laughs> anyway, it does look very pretty encapsulated. <laughs> oh dear, oh dearie me. Okay, yes, so carrying on with the clear encapsulating that little finger and turning the nail upside down because i used the clear tips you can see from the bottom it's, it still looks pretty underneath as well oh it's so nice i can't remember what inspired me to do this set because i did it quite a while ago but um yeah it's i really like how it turned out anywho 
So I've given the nails a full cure and now it's time to file for my frosty filing freaks. If you are not interested in the filing routine I will show then please go ahead and skip to the timestamp in the corner of the screen that you saw flash up and you will get to the next part. But for my frosty filing freaks, here we go. Uh, I've got quite a bit of tidying up to do, so good old e-file to the rescue. Now, when I'm filing the sides where the netting is, um, it, 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 whenever you have any type of fabric, um, you will get fraying that doesn't want to file. Uh, the only way I find that you can do it is if you use some, um, some uh, what you call it, some glue, some nail glue, run it along the edges, let that set up and harden and then it makes it easier for you to file because fabric just doesn't like to be filed, you know. So you'll see here, the fabric doesn't want to be filed. So I'm going to remove the dust, try and get off the... Um, thing but you, yeah can you see that fraying at the side right so when the fabric frays at the side like that I grab my nail glue and I run it along and then I'll let it set up because obviously you can't file it while it's wet so leave it alone let that glue set up move on to the next nail so obviously I'm just tidying up and debulking at this point because I've lost the shape of the nails a fair amount so I want to sort out my side walls but I want to do the majority of the work with my hand with my e-file so that I've got less to do with my hand file because I have a lot of pain in my joints and my muscles so the less I do with the hand file the better but I obviously will have to use the hand file so I do the majority of it with the e-file then in comes the hand file and we get to really sharpen up those side walls and again as I'm filing it's starting to fray on the sides so in with the nail glue leave that alone let that set up and move on to the other nails same again we are doing the under arch then rotating the file up so that it's flat against those side walls and reshape them and bring them in and make them nice and tapered because this is a this is a tapered square or long barrel arena however you want to call it it's not um it's not a square it is definitely tapered so i want to hold that nail file right flat up against those walls and really get my shape defined and you see the difference with filing this now that I've put the glue on. You may need to repeat putting the glue on as you continue filing. But it's the only way i found to be able to get rid of the fraying on anything that you, any type of fabric or material that you encapsulate. That's the only way I know how to get rid of the the fraying is to use the super glue which hardens around it and then allows you to actually file it. it it does work give it a try if you've had the same if you've had if you've encapsulated anything and it's hung over the sides at all you'll know exactly what i mean about the fraying and this this little super glue trick just really works it does the job so once I'm happy with the shape of the side walls, I will use a diamond bit to go around the cuticle area, get that nice and flush. What we don't want is a lip. So we want a smooth transition from the natural nail to the product, which then rises in a nice slope to the apex. So you want to make sure it's totally flush with the natural nail. If it's not flush with the natural nail, that's where you'll more likely to get lifting because you know you'll get your hair caught underneath it and stuff like that when you when that grows out say three millimeters when that grows out three millimeters if you run your finger over it you should not feel the beginning of the um, product from your nail it should be totally flat with no bits for you to get your nail on you would just it should be totally seamless. That's the word I'm looking for, totally seamless. So that's why you want to make sure that back uh, cuticle area is nice and flush with the nail so that as it grows out, there's nothing for it to catch on and it will just look very neat and tidy as it grows out. 
So as you can see, I've changed my e-file back to that tapered barrel bit and I'm just going to sort out the um, body of the nail. So I'm just refining the shape. This is a bit lumpy bumpy because I did so many different layers of different things. It's a little bit lumpy bumpy. So I'm just trying to um, smooth out the surface and debulk a little bit and make sure that the free edge is nice and thin, but not too thin. So we're looking for um, a credit card thickness on the free edge. Even with a length of this you know, size, well, even with the size of these nails, the length of these nails, even with that, you still don't want the nails to be massively thick. It's, it's not necessary at all. As long as you've got your apex in the back third, you do not have to have absolutely um, thick nails when they're long like this. It, it, no. I wear long nails all the time and my nails are not massively thick you guys see it as I'm working you know I don't have massively thick nails and how often do I get a break not very often at all it's only when I do something silly like shutting it in a in a drawer or a cupboard or something that well yeah that's going to snap the nail of course it is <laughs> but it's yeah it's not very often that I am um, yeah I break a nail so absolutely no need to have very thick nails as long as you Get your apex in the right place that's where all your strength is derived from so i've switched to my sanding band to continue smoothing the surface of this nail and just really refine and contour it so that it's got a nice lovely shape and it's even and yeah make sure there's no lumps and bumps it takes me a bit more time with the filing um because they are very long nails and like I said I'm not particularly neat with my application when it comes to gel so I will sp spend a fair amount of time on the filing just because I'm quite fussy and a bit of a perfectionist not that they're perfect I you know, I always say I'm, I'm never perfect but I want them as close to that as I can get where I'm happy with how they look. I have to be happy with how they look, otherwise I can't stop. <laughs> I'll just keep going until I'm happy. So if that takes time, then it takes time. Don't forget, I also take breaks. Um, I don't do all of this in one go. Yes, you see it all happening in one go in the video, but I'm not doing it all in one go. I have to take breaks because my hands and the rest of my body um, they can't just sit for three, four hours just like that straight. Um, so that's, so that, I mean, that's when I'm doing my nails, it's like three, four hours. When I'm doing nails like this on hand dolly, this could take me um, two hours, it could take two and a half hours, it could take three hours. I can't remember how long this took, but because of all the flesh curing, it does take, you know, it does take a fair amount of time to do. It's not a quick process. And as you can see, I take my time with the filing, which also takes time. So yeah, with a set of nails like this, because it's so detailed and all of the flesh curing and whatnot, yeah, it probably took two and a half to three hours to do, which sounds insane because if I was doing a full hand uh, of both hands, you'd think, you know, that, that would probably take me five to six hours can you imagine <clears throat> yeah no that's not happening <laughs> i'm not doing that <laughs> but also because i'm not under any time constraints because you know this my, my client's hand dolly she's not in a hurry to go anywhere i can take my time and not rush so that also you've got to factor that in if this was a client i Obviously, I wouldn't spend six hours on a set of nails. That's ridiculous. You can't ask a client to sit for that amount of time. So, yeah, probably four hours max for a set of like this, a full, you know, 10 nails, probably max of four hours for that. I mean, and that is a long time. That is still a very long time. Like I said, it's not just about the length, it's about the detail that went into the nails. That also is very time consuming. So yeah, a, a more simple set wouldn't take quite as long. But yeah, anywho, finished with the filing. I've buffed. I've just 
give them one last look and just make sure I'm happy with them and this is what they look like after I have given hand dolly a nice wash to remove all the dust and now it's time to top it off and keep it tough oh yes and look at that oh it's so pretty and this when you say oh it was worth it all that work and faffing about was actually worth it if you could see these in person i really wish you could see these in person if you could see these in person the depth and the color shift and oh just beautiful well i think they're beautiful you let me know what you think because we are at the end of the video i've got some footage and some photos at the very end so you can let me know what you think of the finished set but yeah this is all i have so i'd like to say thank you ever so much for coming to my channel's channel watching this video spending some of your most precious time with me thank you i appreciate you ever so much if you have not done so already please go ahead and click that subscribe button join the frosty fam i'd love to have you if you have enjoyed this video or it's helped you in any way shape or form please go ahead and click that like button it really helps my channel out and it takes you but a second to do and if you feel like it do please leave me a comment i love getting to know you guys and talking to you so yeah that's all i have for this time peeps you take care now and i will speak to you all again very very soon bye for now like a Make it